In this one I wanted to show you two tools, the range selection tool for making masks and local histogram equalization. So um, we can make masks the normal way with a luminance mask and uh, you can use a few other tools to make masks and it works really well. Uh, the bright parts are the parts that shine through and the dark parts get masked and of course you can always invert that. But it doesn't always give you the strongest mask. Sometimes you really want to get at specific areas. So uh, in, enter range selection, one of my favorite ways of masking. I uh, almost always use this in every image. It's got a real-time preview. And uh, by dialing up the lower limit, it starts showing through all the darkest parts of the image. And if we dial that up, it'll eventually only show the brightest parts of the image. So by scaling that around, we can actually you know, focus on whatever zone we want. So uh, you can see the, the dust being masked out here and the, the brighter region on the inside of the nebula being shown. Fuzziness will add kind of detail and structure to it. So it's worth doing a little bit of that. Um, I'll go with more rather than less. And then the smoothness will change the, the gradation between uh, the dark and the light parts. So you really do want to make it a little bit smooth so you don't get hard edges in your masks. Once you're all set, I'm just going to close it there and I run it. It will cr create the mask and then I can apply it and you can see just how stronger a mask it is depending on which piece you want to do. So I'm going to uh, leave it masked like this and turn off show mask and now I'm going to operate on the, the brightest part of the nebula. So very handy for separating from the background and you can really dial it into whatever level you want. Um, now I'm going to use local histogram equalization, LHE, and it also has a real-time preview. And uh, so what this does is it scans your image with, uh, you know, imagine a radius, a circle, and at each inside the circle it will adjust the histogram to give it contrast. So you're getting contrasty regions. Now notice this is crazy uh, on the default settings is very burned out so I always dial this way down right away and I make use of the toggle button in the real-time preview to see what is happening. So you can see it's, it's adding to the dark structure in this case. It's giving a bit more pop to the image. You can make the radius bigger and get uh, kind of bigger structures that way and then the contrast limit really controls just how intense you're being. So again, uh, blink back and forth to really make sure um, yeah, I, I abused several images this way because I, I used it too much and it really made it very, very crispy. So I've learned to kind of back down a bit. So once you're good, you can run it. It uh, eats up some processor cycles here. It's a pretty intense tool, clocky. Um, so uh, between those two tools uh, and using them together, you can really make your images pop. It really brings out the data. Um, just be careful to not overuse them, uh, to make your masks carefully. It's in the experimentation phase of the whole thing. Uh, so here's the after and before, after, and you can see it really pops out some of those features. It's a matter to taste. Uh, we're beyond the science piece of it where we're now starting to make artistic decisions. and so. Uh, just be careful out there, kids, and enjoy the use of range selection and local histogram equalization.